Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Khmer's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So when new sets come out and new Commander products come out, well, certain cards get reprinted and those cards finally become budget friendly once again. Or okay, at least I should say they meet my budget requirements for building decks. So on this episode, I'm going to talk about some cards that finally, finally, finally are less than $1 and now meet that restriction. And if you're interested in these cards, these are definitely some ones that you're going to want to pick up now while they are budget friendly. And just a quick note, in the description below, there's a link to the list of these cards in case you're looking to pick some of them up. So make sure you check that out. So with all that said, let's jump into the cards. So first up, let's talk about Kessig, Wolf Run, and actually, okay, really quick, a big thank you to Scryfall. You are a fantastic website. And yeah, this is a screenshot of Scryfall, which clearly shows off the awesomeness of Kessig Wolf Run and also the prices. So Kessig Wolf Run is a land that can tap for a colorless so by paying X to red and a green and tapping it. Target creature gets plus X plus zero and gains trample until end of turn. So this is a fantastic utility land that can also just be a mana dump that can help you push through a lot of damage. And speaking of damage, well, it used to be pretty damaging to your wallet. <laughs> okay, that was... um. Pretty bad. <clears throat> As you can see, anyways, on the right, the new Capenna Commander version of this card is just 77 cents when previously, well, this card was quite a bit more expensive and it has been for quite some time. Really quick, let's jump over to the mtgstocks.com chart on this card. And as you can see, this card has been above a dollar for quite some time and its price was rising and rising and rising, going over even $4 back in January. Now the Innistrad version of course is dropping in price as well, still above $2, but yeah, if you want the most budget friendly version, pick up that new Capenna version, a fantastic card for decks that, well, well first up you have to at least have Gruel in your color identity, and decks that actually want to push through damage, and again, you can just dump a ton of mana into this to do so, or again, just giving trample to some creatures can just be a great benefit regardless. So a great utility land for many decks out there for sure. Speaking of which, next up we've got Gavany Township, another fantastic utility land, and to be honest, I can't remember this card being budget for a long, long time. Regardless, it can tap for a colorless, and it has pay two green, white, tap, put a plus one counter on each creature you control. So again, just another great way to fill a land slot in your deck if you can afford to, and now you can definitely afford to budget-wise, at least I should say, many more players can now because it's only 73 cents for that new Capanna Commander version. Obviously, this card works great in plus plus one counter builds, but again, it's just a fantastic way to utilize a land slot and a way to just grow your team throughout the game. If you've got some extra mana just to throw into this, you know, right before your turn, great. Or again, you know, maybe you've got a go wide strategy. This can really help you out with that as well. And really quick, when it comes to price, let's again go to MTG Stocks and look at the Innistrad version of this card. Again, right below about $2 or so for quite some time, but then creeping up again above $4 like Kessig Wolf Run. And now with the reprint, of course, this price is dropping, but obviously it's still not quite as affordable as that new Capenna version, so go get that one. And yeah, a savings from about $4 for a card to down to less than $1, that is quite a good amount. Speaking of which, next up we've got Creeping Tar Pit, yet another fantastic utility land. It's like I put all the utility lands first for whatever reason. I don't know why I did that, but I did. Anyways, Creeping Tar Pit enters the battlefield, tap, you can tap for a blue or black, and it has pay one blue black. Creeping Tar Pit becomes a 3-2 blue and black. I want a creature token until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. It's still a land. So this is a creature land that can always get through on your opponents. And yeah, just throughout the game, you can dish out a good amount of damage with this land that's not really taking up a spot in your deck. And of course, obviously, there are certain synergies with certain commanders out there that might benefit you whenever you get creatures through, etc, etc, etc. Regardless, the newest version of this card is just 66 cents. So yes, well below that $1 mark. And again, let's move really quick onto the chart for this card. And as you can see for this version, well, it went from about $3 or so and went up slightly throughout the year, around 3 or $4. And yes, with this new version... 66 cents is a lot more reasonable in my opinion than that three dollars so there's plenty of other decks out there that are going to be excited to utilize this card again as long as you know you you have uh demir in your color identity 
which kind of goes without saying, but I want to make sure I say it anyways. Anyways, moving on to a less restrictive card, at least for color identity, let's talk about Castle Ardenvale. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control white planes. It can tap for a white, and by paying two white, white, and tapping it, you create a 1 1 white human creature token. On top of that, as you can see, there are a couple of versions of this card, all, you know, different versions from Throne of Eldraine, but this is the first reprint since that set. And yes, with that reprint, it is now at 86 cents underneath our $1 mark. Obviously, this card is a lot better in decks where you've got more of a likelihood of having a planes in play, so, you know, either a mono white deck or a deck that is two colors with white being one of them. Regardless, this land can be a fantastic token generator, which again, can just help you if you've got extra mana lying around, and you know, this is something to do with it. Make more and more tokens, and yeah, there are plenty of different strategies that can utilize those tokens to great effect. And as you can see, over the past year or half or so, it has definitely been around the $2 mark, creeping up toward the $3 mark, but now with this new version again, it is once again below $1, and once again, a budget-friendly card. So again, if you've got a deck that, say, is one or two colors and can utilize this card to make tokens and benefit from those tokens, go for it. And finally, the final land I'm going to highlight in this episode is Nesting Grounds, which is just under $1 at 94 cents. It's a land that can tap for a color, so by paying one, you can tap to move a counter from target permanent you control onto another target permanent, activate only as a sorcery. So, this land has absolutely no color identity restriction. Again, it can be used in any deck out there. And yeah, I mean, obviously, you want to utilize it when a deck that cares about counters. Now, whether that's plus plus one counters, or maybe, you know, charge counters, or even something like indestructible counter, or those other keyword counters. This can definitely be utilized in decks that really, really love counters. And actually, this card was definitely more budget-friendly a while back. I mean, for quite some time, it was quite inexpensive. So let's move on to the MTG stocks chart for the original version of this card. And as you can see, back in even January, this card was budget-friendly. And then all of a sudden, it started going up and up and up and up, getting over $4 at one point in March. But of course, now this reprint, the original version has gone down a little bit as well. And yeah, the new version, of course, is cheaper itself at less than $1. So if you're looking for this card, make sure you pick that one up. Moving away from the lands, though, let's talk about Mystic Confluence, an instant for three blue blue that says choose three may choose the same mode more than once. Counter target spell, its controller pays three, return target creature to its owner's hand, draw a card. So this is a very flexible utility spell. It can help you out in a lot of scenarios. Again, be able to bounce something or be able to counter a spell or draw a card, all of which are really nice things to have. And though this card has not been budget for quite some time, as you can see on the right side of the image, 57 cents. Yeah, I like the sound of that. And as you can see, if we check out the MTG stocks chart on the Battle Bond version of this card, it's been pretty consistent for quite some time, around two or three dollars. But yeah, I'll take that 57 cent version instead. So if you're looking for a flexible counter spell that can, you know, bounce some things or draw some cards, go for it. Next up, let's move on to yet another blue card with Frantic Search, an instant for two and a blue that says draw two, discard two, untap up to three lands. So this is essentially a free loot spell that's going to draw you two and make you discard two, which... Again, it's not card advantage, but it is card selection. It can really help you out in a lot of scenarios, getting rid of dead cards in your hand, or actually putting things in your graveyard that you actually want there. And of course, again, it's not, you know, technically a free spell, but you are untapping those three lands, and assuming that each of your lands tap for one, it's basically free. But yeah, on top of that, it can also actually generate you mana, or should I say net you mana, if you've got lands that can tap for more than one, like, you know, bounce lands. So that's a fantastic spell and a lot of decks out there. And yeah, now with this new printing, it's only 44 cents. This card I remember being budget for quite some time and I used it in a decent amount of decks. And then unfortunately, yeah, the price just kept creeping up and up and up. It went from being less than a dollar a little over a year ago. And yeah, right before this printing, it was creeping up on $2. So thank you for the reprint of this one, Wizards. 44 cents, yeah, I can live with that. Moving on, though, a card that I don't think has ever been budget since I've actually had this channel. Let's talk about Awakening Zone. It's an enchantment for a two and a green. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a 0-1 Colossus Eldrazi spawn creature token. It has sacrifice this creature, add colorless. So overall, just a fantastic low-to-the-ground creature token generating engine that can make you a ton of Eldrazi spawn throughout the game. Now, obviously, being 0-1s, they're not really going to do much for you in combat, except for your maybe block. But of course, you're also in green, so you've got plenty of ways to pump them, too. And also, yeah, you can utilize those creatures for mana, and you can quickly boost yourself ahead of your opponents. 
And I'm really hoping this one stays budget for a little bit, but I'm not sure how long it will because it's 92 cents at this point. So just under that dollar mark. And yeah, for a very, very long time, I have seen this card being at least $2 or more, and it was creeping up on $4 recently, but now with this printing, less than a dollar, and hopefully that stays that way for at least a little bit. Next up though, yet another green card that can help us with tokens. Let's talk about my Totic Slime. It's a 4-4 four, four, ooze for four and a green that has when it dies, create two, two, two green ooze creature tokens. They have when this creature dies, create two, one, one green ooze creature tokens. So essentially this is kind of like seven creatures in one. Again, you get the original, then you get the two, two, twos, and then essentially from each of those, you get two more, so four, one, ones. So this is an incredible card, especially in aristocrat style strategy. We're looking to sacrifice creatures because yeah, seven bodies for the price of one, that's gonna go a long ways. And speaking of going a long ways, your budget now will with this card as well, because it's just 34 cents with this brand new printing. This was definitely a card that I have utilized before and has been budget and was budget for quite some time, but about a year ago, this thing just started spiking in price. I'm sure there were some commanders that came out and they were like, yeah, this is really good with those. And then all of a sudden the price was up over $4. And yeah, I am very, very, very happy that this card is now very budget friendly at just 34 cents. Moving on, group hug friends rejoice because Sylvan Offering is now a very budget friendly card. The newest version of Sylvan Offering is just 50 cents, and it's a sorcery that costs X and a green, and it says, choose an opponent, you and that player each create an XX green tree full creature token, choose an opponent, you and that player each create X11 green elf warrior creature tokens. So yeah, group hug, hey, uh, I'll make a lot of these creature tokens, you make a lot of these creature tokens, let's do things that help each other. Like, you know, smacking other opponents with these creature tokens, but yeah, outside of group hug, there are other decks that can utilize this card. But I think a lot of Group Hug fans out there are going to be happy to see this one back to being budget friendly. And since early last year, this card has creeped up in price. It was just over a $1.50 or so, and then it started going up over $4. And it was just around that price, you know, up until this reprinting. So yeah, a much more budget friendly version with this 50 cent new one from Streets of New Capenna Commander. Moving on, we've got a card that this is the second printing ever with Custody Lich. And with this second reprinting, it has dropped the price underneath $1 at 72 cents. It's a 4-2 zombie cleric that costs three black black, and when it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch, and whenever you become the monarch, target player sacrifices a creature. So introducing the monarch mechanic to the game can definitely be a fantastic thing for a lot of decks out there. Again, if you've got creatures that can get through, great, you can keep getting the monarch back and keep getting a lot of additional card advantage from that. And of course, while this is in play, you also get to make players sacrifice creatures, which is very powerful to have a repeatable edict effect. And if we just take a quick look at the chart, yeah, this card was once budget friendly. And then at one point it jumped over $6. Now, as of recently, it was around $4 or so. It's still not budget friendly in my book, but yeah, much more budget friendly now with this reprinting being at 72 cents. So if you've been waiting for this card to be budget, now's your chance to pick it up. Next up, a card that sees a ton of play. Let's talk about Austere Command. Austere Command is an incredibly flexible board wipe. It's a sorcery for four white, white, and it says choose two. Destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with mana value three or less, or destroy all creatures with mana value four or greater. So depending on whatever the situation is, whether you need to wipe out, well, all creatures, sure, you can do that. Or maybe just these small creatures or just the big creatures, or all the artifacts, all the enchantments. You can mix and match with whatever you need for the situation that is going on. And with this new printing, this card is now underneath $1 at 61 cents. And yeah, there are quite a few printings of this version. It's finally budget friendly. Because even with a more recent version of this card from Commander Legends, well, that price was pretty consistent. Just, hey, uh, right around $2 or so. And now, yes, it is finally less than $1 even with the Streets of New Capetta Commander version. Again, this card does see a ton of play though, so we will see how long that price holds. Moving on though, we've got Ore Mutation, which is now under 50 cents. It is 47 cents with this new Capanda Commander version. It's an instant for a green white that says destroy target enchantment, create X11 green sapling creature tokens for X is that enchantment's mana value. So for just two mana, yeah, an instant speed, you can get rid of enchantment. And of course, on top of that, you can make a ton of tokens depending on that, you know, cost of the enchantment. Obviously, for a token deck or a go wide strategy, this card can be fantastic, being essentially a dual card in this deck. It not only, you know, can help be a great form of removal, but of course also making a ton of tokens for cheap. 
And actually, over the past couple of years, this card's price has definitely been increasing over time, you know, with more and more commanders that work with this card very well and really want more creatures on the board. And now with this reprinting, it is back down to being a budget-friendly card, just 47 cents. So if you've got a go white strategy or a token strategy in these colors, make sure you are considering this one. Next up, though, let's move on to some artifacts, starting off with Twinning Staff, which is now just 66 cents. It's an artifact for three that says if you would copy a spell one or more times and said copy it that many times plus initial time, you may choose new targets for an additional copy. And by paying seven, you can tap to copy target insert sorcery while you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. So essentially, if you copy something, you can extra copy for free with this. And yeah, more and more so recently, it seems like we've been getting a lot of commanders that work with, you know, either, you know, copying spells or benefit from copies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So 66 cents is an absolute steal for those commanders for this card, especially with the price that it, well, jumped to, because again, this is only the second printing of it. It was a budget card for actually quite some time, and then as, you know, more of those commanders came out, like I mentioned, it started going up, 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 and eventually became a $4 card. And, and again, luckily with this reprint now, it is much more budget friendly at just 66 cents. So if you've got a commander that cares about copying, make sure you copy this one down. <clears throat> okay, that was bad. Anyways. Next up, yet another artifact, but one that helps you out in a different way. Let's talk about Quite a Spike. It's an equipment for three that has Equip 3, and it has Equip Creature as Death Touch. And on top of that, whenever Equip Creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. So this card can be incredibly deadly attached to any creature. Again, if that creature gets through, well, it's going to be taking that opponent down quite a bit. But of course, this can be especially deadly on, you know, creatures that either have first strike or double strike because, well, that first strike, that death touch becomes essentially really hard to take that creature out in combat. And of course, with double strike, well, you hit that opponent twice then and they lose half their life then half again. So if they were 40, they go down to 10. And of course, speaking of down, of course, the price of this card has dropped down to 75 cents. And the price of this one has really increased over the years. I mean, again, this card was somewhat near that budget mark, but definitely increased a lot. And yeah, with this version in particular, nearly got to $6 or so. So yeah, I'll take the much more budget-friendly version with the uh, 75 cent new Capanna Commander version. Thank you. Moving on, we've got Oblivion Stone, yet another artifact. This one for three mana that has pay for tap a fate counter on target permanent. And by paying five, we can tap and sacrifice Oblivion Stone, destroy each non-land permanent without a fate counter on it, then remove all fate counters from all permanents. So first up, colorless decks rejoice because yeah, this is one of the very few board wipes that you've got access to. And yeah, uh, again, it being budget friendly is definitely gonna be very helpful for those decks out there. And of course, obviously, if you've got an artifact deck that maybe works on untapping this so you can get those fate counters on more things more quickly or ways to redistribute those fate counters, this can be a way to protect some of your permanents while wiping the board. But really, it's been the high price tag that's been wiped away. <laughs> okay, I need to stop that. Anyways, 51 cents just for this card now. And as you can see with the Double Masters version of this card with the chart, yeah, this price has been around two or three dollars for quite some time. And with this reprinting, it is now much more budget friendly at just 51 cents. That's quite the drop. Moving on, a card that, well, I can't remember the last time I was actually able to use this in a deck because it hasn't been budget for quite some time. Let's talk about Felwar Stone. It's an artifact for two that has tap add one man of any color that landed opponent controls could produce. So this is an incredibly efficient mana rock, a two mana artifact that enters the battlefield untapped and can tap for, well, a lot of the time, just basically any color. And now just 60 cents thanks to the most recent reprintings of this card. I mean, this card was reprinted in Forgotten Realms Commander, Neon Dynasty Commander, and now finally New Capenna Commander, which finally knocked it down underneath a dollar. I mean, the price of this card has just been pretty ridiculous, just going up and up and up over the years, up around $6 at one point. And then again, with those most recent reprintings, it's finally dropped down. And now with the most recent, recent reprinting, finally underneath that $1 mark so I can utilize it again. And hopefully it stays that way for quite some time. And speaking of a mana rock that has not been budget for quite some time, let's talk about Demir Signet. Like Felwar Stone, it also costs two mana, so it's very efficient, and it has pay one, tap, add blue, black. So yeah, basically just like any of the other Signets, but in Demir. But unlike many of the other Signets, this one hasn't seen very many reprintings recently. I mean, Zendikar Rise of Commander was quite some time ago, and, and yeah, since then, what a secret layer drop, which is not going to be budget friendly. But now with this brand new printing in New Capenna, it's finally underneath a dollar at 88 cents. 
So we'll see how long this stays underneath $1. I'm hoping to at least get this included in a few decks and it's probably gonna, you know, jump above a dollar. But yeah, make sure you pick this one up if you're really looking for a mana rock in these colors. Obviously it's fantastic. Because yeah, as you can see over time with that reprinting in Zenikar, you know, it was budget friendly for a little bit. And of course it's been creeping up over time to over $4 and, and yeah, it's going to do the same again unless he gets reprinted again. But finally, the moment that you've all been waiting for because last up there's Wayfarer's Bobble. And yes, there's a reason why I put it last, not first. And there's actually kind of a stipulation to this card and why I'm recommending to buy it. But you might not want to buy it now, but we'll see. Anyways, Wayfarer's Bobble is an extremely beloved card for me. I mean, it is probably the card that I'm most known for on this channel. It, of course, is an artifact for one that has pay to tap, sacrifice Wayfarer's Bobble, search your library for a basic land card, put that card on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. This is land ramp in any color, and again, turn to land ramp. Now, I won't try to sell this card any more than I already have, because, well, I've done an entire episode just on why I'm obsessed with this card. Regardless, yes, it is finally underneath $1 at 89 cents, and I am absolutely ecstatic. My old friend has not been budget friendly for quite some time. I mean, at one point, this card was over $4. And for quite a long time now, it has been more expensive than Soul Ring. That being said, the reason that I put my beloved friend last in this episode is actually a pretty simple one. The title for this episode, again, is Pick Up These Cards Now. And yes, I mean, obviously I'm highlighting cards that have been recently reprinted and their prices went down quite a bit, so you can pick them up now for a lot cheaper than they were recently. That being said, Wayfarer's Bobble is going to see a reprint in Commander Legends 2 Battle for Baldur's Gate, and that spoiler season starts next week on Monday. Obviously, with this new Capenna Commander reprint, I'm incredibly excited about it. That being said, it being reprinted in an actual full set at Common is going to be incredible for its price. It being less than $1 is incredible, but I am hoping that this new set coming out with the printing of it at Common is going to absolutely tank its price. So yes, if you're looking to build a deck and you want Wayfarer's Bobble in that deck right away, go for it. Buy this card now. But if you are willing to wait, this card's price could definitely go down a lot further. That being said, a disclaimer, I am not an expert in MGG Finance, and, and yeah, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't think I'm going to be wrong, but I could be wrong. I would, you would think, you know, with a printing and a full set, this card's price would go down quite a bit. But, you know, I, I've been wrong before about things, okay? Regardless, I am so happy to be able to include this card in this episode, and I am so happy that this card is less than $1, and now I can finally include it in budget decks once again. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.